Uh, I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. I figured one of us has to wear the top hat. Yes. And, and I today it's me. Mine. I feel so powerful with my top hat. I feel like there is no limit to how high I can get. <laughs> Oh, it just feels wrong, me wearing it. That's your thing. It's your thing, it's not my thing. Uh, welcome to the Pope on Film. My name is May Lynn. This is episode 460 of the podcast. Yes, yes, Little Lebowski, Urban Achievers, and proud we are of all of that. I've got my Blahaz Shark Rocky here. We are ready to go. And, and let me tell you something, Bunny. Um, there should be a warning before the movie Boxing Helena. First off, I want to say, all my life I haven't seen this movie, so I called it Boxing Helena. Then I watched the movie and everybody pronounces her name Helena, Boxing Helena. I'm not changing my pronunciation. That's right. Take a stand. Fight the power. I'm taking this. I'm taking a stand. All my life, this movie has been Boxing Helena. And then I watch the movie and learn I've pronounced it wrong. No, maybe the movie's wrong. Maybe the movie is wrong. Sh Sinead O'Connor is dead. It's up to you to step up. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I've been listening to Sinead. That, that woman got a bad rap. Let me tell you something about the movie Boxing Helena. There should be a warning before the movie starts that says, Warning, this song, this movie features the song Sadness by Enigma. <laughs> warning, Gregorian chants will be used in this film. Like sometimes you go to the movie and it's movies and they'll say, Oh, watch out, Black Panther Wakanda Forever features flashing lights. It should say, 90s Gregorian chants are used in this film. I think we should just go with warning, piece of shit. Uh, hearing Sadness by Enigma gave me 90s PTSD. Suddenly I was a, a teenager again and I didn't like it. It's the same feeling I get when I hear Cotton Eye Joe or uh, Scat Man. Okay. I'm a scat man. Skip -a -dee -ba 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 yeah, that's how I felt when there's a sex scene happening in boxing Helena and suddenly sad. Dimwa. I feel like we should do like a commercial, like, uh, attention. This is an important announcement. Did you hear Enigma in the 90s? Then you may. You may qualify for financial compensation. Call us now. Yes. So anyway, uh, oh, such it's going to be a, a shorter episode than our usual nine hours of insanity, but it's going to be a good show. We're going to be talking about um, uh, television shows, cousins, uh, otters, documentaries, breweries, Art Garfunkel, what are you doing what here? The fuck? Yeah. Go away. I don't like it. Bill Paxton or Bill Pullman, who cares? And uh, <laughs> Michael Jackson's 1991 black or white music video. We we will definitely be getting back to Bill Paxton. Or Bill Pullman, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, 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 no, it does not. They are interchangeable. It, 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 and also, spoilers for this week's movie, uh, Boxing Helena, at the end of the film, it turns out it was all a dream of Bob Newhart's. Yes. What's the fucking point? The thing is that all my life I've known the basic plot of the movie, 
that a man obsessed with a woman cuts off her arms and cuts off her legs. And then I assume, and then I assume, and then I assume he kept her in a box. There's no box. There's no box. No, there's no box anywhere. It's like bedding, Helena. Yeah. Professor X wheelchairing Helena. There's no box. You're not keeping her in a box. Then what's the point of the title Boxing Helena? Not only do you not keep her in a box, you don't even throw a punch. To schedule and fend. It's upsetting to me. It, and I've known that the whole thing was all a dream. So basically, this whole movie is pointless. Like, what's the point of watching the movie if I already know that the ending is Robot Monster? We, we we should just save this for a little later. I know! This movie just upsets me. Out. This is... Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just save it. it. Let's move, move on, on to, to the, the monologue. Jeff! Honey, listen. Calm down. Your name is not Jeff, okay? I know you must be confused. Your name is not Jeff. No, it is time once again for our occasional reoccurring podcast segment that features a potpourri of news, a sprinkling of bits, skits here and there, etc. And we both agreed to name this segment Jeff. Now, I wanted to call it the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends Download today. However, we both agreed to naming it Jeff. And so, buckle up, y'all, because it's time to Jeff it up! That's a, that's a possible new catchphrase to start off our our segment, Jeff. I just came up with it, and I think it's all right. Are you ready, Bunny? Yes, I am. Okay, first off, Bunny, first off, uh, buckle up. Tighten your seat belts and hold on to your hats because it is time once again for the Pope on film to break the internet with yet another controversial hot-button topic. This shocking unpopular opinion takes down one of America's biggest celebrities and will no doubt set off a firestorm on social media. I dare say a firestorm. But hey, that's what we do here on the Pope on Film podcast. We push the envelope. Yes. We push it. So, are you ready, Bunny, to once again break the internet with another shocking take? Yes, I am. Okay. Here it is. Brace for impact. Ramming speed. <clears throat> hey, Patty Duke. Identical cousins? That's not a thing! No. Identical cousins? That's not a fucking thing, Patty Duke! You just made that up for your dumb show. And obviously, we can see the line when the two of you were in the same room. See the line. Yeah. And then most of the time, it's just <coughs> you talking to some, the back of someone's head. We know that's just a, a double. It's just you there. I, oh, yeah. I, I went there. Taking down Patty Duke in the year of our Lord 2023. That is she's no not, doubt going to break the internet because she rules Hollywood right now. And she's not even really a Duke. Yeah, she's not even a Duke. King Ralph was more of a duke. Yeah. King Ralph. Oh, yeah, I just nicknamed the biggest movie at the box office. King Ralph. Funny. I like this. There's going to be a bit of a game at the end, so I like this. Here's a bit of an odd news story. Do you remember a month or two back when whales were teaming up to sink yachts in the ocean? Yes. Have they stopped? Oh, no, they're still doing that. And I just love that story. It kind of feels as if, like, all of a sudden, whales have, like, learned about communism. Yeah. And it's like, hey. Um, hey, whales, I've been reading this book 
Have you heard about this thing called capitalism? Apparently it's bad. And uh, rich people control so much. We should be taking down rich people. And so all of the whales got together and started sinking yachts. The whales of the ocean uniting to topple the system. Yes. Good on you, whales. Well, the whale revolution or whale evolution, verbal copyright 2023, the Pope on Film podcast, and Reverend May Lynn. The whale evolution may be spreading to other species now. Oh, cool. Because there are reports out of Santa Cruz of a particularly aggressive five-year-old female sea otter who has been attacking surfers oh, and yes. stealing their surfboards, yes. oftentimes eating the surfboards. And once again, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. We got some communist sea otters that are attacking surfers. I am 100% down with that. How do you know that it's a female? Or is the sea otter like, oh, there's another one of those fucking surfers. This is my home. This is my home. And this surfer is like, you know what? Fuck you. This is my surfboard. And I have a vagina. Like, how do you know? Because as soon as the otter gets on the surfboard, it puts on the Lifetime channel. This is how, this is how they know that the sea otter is a female. <laughs> okay, so this is how they know the sea otter is a female. You know how every you always know when a shark is around because you hear da 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 you hear, let's go, girls. <laughs> and then the sea otter attacks. So, there you go. Short skirt. So, Bunny, brainstorm. What other ocean species do you think could turn communist and start toppling the status quo? Because the status is not quo. Well, I, I don't know about... Because, frankly, the, the first species I'm thinking about, uh, they have been, they have been a, a part of this for a very, very long time. And I believe that they are actually the ringleaders and instigators of the other animals. And that's seagulls. Seagulls, oh, F the seagulls. Seagulls They're who have been dead. fucking with us all our lives. I uh, think the seagulls think are part of it, but, but I think that the mastermind, the real brains behind, and notice yeah. brains, I think there's one really smart ass dolphin behind this whole thing. Yeah. And like a Doctor Doom. <laughs> I, I but like with a long snout because it's a dolphin. I have one. I have an idea. Hmm. What? Hit me, Max. Giant octopus. Octopi. Octopi. Giant octopus. Octopi. Just they just come out of they just come out of the sea. Just, like they just come out of the sea, Kraken style, and eat the yacht like it's a like it's a pirate ship. I'm down with that. That's a good idea. Good job, Maxwell. I'm surprised that dolphins haven't got into it yet. They keep getting in the nets, don't they? Dolphins are going to start attacking fishermen with lightsabers. Octopi are the only animals who can masturbate, and it's still a gangbang. Do 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 Dolphins are doing flips. Yeah. I can totally see that. Yeah. Oh, Bunny. Uh, so today we went to brunch. And uh, Maxwell was eating grapes. And I told him about how 
when I was his, his age, what I like doing is I would try to skin the grapes. And so he got a grape and he started skinning the grape. And then I got one of his grapes and I started skinning the grapes. And then Sam was with us and Sam started skinning the grapes. And Natasha, being Natasha, just rolled her eyes and looked the other way. So we're skinning the grapes. And I'm not sure how this happened, but we decided... I think it was Maxwell who said that what we're doing is a grape autopsy or, as we called it, a grape topsy. Oh, no. Mom said that. Oh, Mom said yeah. it was a grape autopsy? We're performing a grape autopsy or a grape topsy. So anyway, I wrote a bad movie that you're going to be starring in. You're going to play the grape. Okay. It's all about the Fruit of the Looms uh, fruits. Remember those commercials with the Fruit of the Looms yes. where they'd be like humans in fruit costumes? Okay, well, the grape of Fruit of the Looms goes nuts and starts killing all the other fruits. Uh, tying them up saw style and then uh, torturing them before finally uh, performing autopsies, dissecting them. It's going to be called Grape Topsy. The best part is like, okay, so the grape kidnaps the strawberry and ties him up and he's, he's torturing him. Maybe we play Stucky in the Middle with you and you in the grape outfit start dancing. But then when you finally cut into the strawberry, he doesn't bleed blood. Strawberries come out. Okay. It's going to be direct to Tubi. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be a, a Tubi exclusive. Because uh, one thing that this podcast has taught me, anyone can make a movie. This is true. I, I saw a scene on Twitter from the movie Ouija Shark. Okay. It, this guy gets eaten by a shark and he <coughs> dies. So then his ghost appears. But then, oh, the shark that ate him and killed him? has the power of the Ouija and becomes a ghost shark and now they're fighting as their ghosts. And it's so bad and so cheesy and it's obviously just like a shark puppet that they did a close-up of and it's so bad and you know, it... One of these summers we could do the summer of shark movies. There are a billion. We could literally just throw a dart and find one. When you said uh, Ouija shark... I immediately thought Luigi Shark. Not a Luigi Shark. Luigi Shark number one. Yeah. No, that is that is what I was thinking too. Luigi Shark, yeah. definitely. Um. So how are you doing, Bonnie? Uh, pretty okay. Hanging out, you know. Well, Whatever. I just uh today. I'm finally starting to crawl out of a deep, depressive episode. Yeah. It has not been fun. My life is kind of insane right now. I think... So, it's very busy and it's very hectic, but I think the main trigger of my deep, depressive episode is... Um, Emerald bought a house! Seriously? Yeah. Because she started working at, like, the age of 14 or 15. She started working at the Brahms fast food slash ice cream place that's, like, five minutes down the street. And she became, a like, a good employee, and she worked really hard. And, like, she was there for years. Yeah. And she was a hardworking, dependable employee and then she moved to Starbucks and she worked there for a while and then she left there because her boyfriend almost died and she was taking care of him and then she went to go apply for a job at another coffee place and the person who worked there was a manager with Emerald when she worked at Brahms and the manager said hey um, there's a new coffee place that's opening on the other side of town I want you to be the store manager. So Emerald is now the store manager of her own coffee shop. Nice. She is getting paid banks. She's doing the scheduling. 
She's hiring people, interviewing people. She is dealing directly with the district manager, going to meetings. She's doing the deliveries, unloading the trucks. She is making so much, like, she's a store manager, and she made enough to get a house. She signed the deed, like, on Thursday or Friday. And so, right now, she's getting stuff, like a couch and a washer and a dryer, and she's getting ready to move, and that just punched me right in the fucking face. Just right in the face. That I am, I'm, I'm old enough that my kids are starting to leave, and Amber's hoping to move out by the end of the year, and and it it's just sad. I never thought that I would. I I have five kids, yeah, but I I I never took the time to process the idea that my children will leave me. I guess. Yeah. And, and I've just been really depressed and really sad, but today I'm I'm starting to crawl my way out of it. And I'm really happy, and I'm really excited to do this episode of the podcast. Also, my life is insane. Yes. Right yes, now. Is. So, last... So, so uh... We did the podcast last on June, July 16th, and then on July 27th, I went to the small town of Prague, Oklahoma, and I was a performer at Prague, Oklahoma's first Pride Festival. And so I was about 30 people showed up, 30, 35 people, and it was a lot of fun. And I did a story time and I talked and I told some jokes and I, I hung out with a bunch of really nice gay people and allies in, in this small town of Craig, Oklahoma. There there were protesters. Really? Kind of. It was a an entire church congregation. It's one of those parks that's so big that, like, here's this big portion of the park, a main road, here's the rest of the park. And so we're over here on, on this part of the park and right across the street on the other side of the park, an entire church congregation decided to have a uh, potluck lunch with singing and prayers right across the street from where we were. And it and at first I'm like, where are we going? I'm not even sure. They said, look for the pride flags, but I don't see any pride flags. Where are we supposed to be? Oh, here's a big group of people. Let me just pull in and they are all white and there's Christian music playing and a Christian flag and one of the cars has a sign that said that says rainbows are God's creation you don't own them okay I'm gonna back up slowly and go somewhere else oh there they are across the street but thankfully they just sang some songs and prayed quietly by themselves and they didn't fuck with us so that was nice and uh, a rapper that I like called Zan the Artist was there, and I was all nervous to meet them. And here they come, and they walk in, and they're going to be performing there too. And I'm all excited and nervous to talk with them and meet them. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go talk to Zan the Artist. So I, I walk over there, and I'm like, uh, hi, Zan the Artist. I'm uh, And he turns, and he looks at me, and he goes, hey, Lynn! Bitch, get over here and hugs me, and we just hung out like we were best friends for the entire pride. It was freaking Whoa. awesome. And I got to meet people and talk, and there was a teacher from Emerald from Eleanor School there. Yeah. I, I don't remember. I don't remember her name. Uh, Eleanor knows, but Eleanor's not here. So that was a lot of fun, and there was a reporter for a local radio station there, KOSU, and they interviewed me a little bit. And then we get there early, and everyone's setting up, all of these people that I don't know, and I'm a bit nervous, and I sit down on the side, and Eleanor comes, and Eleanor's playing with me, and Natasha comes, my wife, and we're hanging out and talking and playing, and there's a guy next to us with a camera who's also just sort of sitting there. I'm assuming he's a cameraman. And he says, hey, do you mind if I film you? And I say, yeah, no problem. So he's filming me and filming Eleanor and, 
and filming us, and he films my entire performance and all that. And then at the end, I learn that he's a documentary filmmaker. Yes. Who did a documentary about a gay organization in Oklahoma City, and the documentary was so good that the rural Oklahoma Pride people contacted the filmmaker and said, hey, we're doing all of these small town Pride events, maybe you want to do a documentary about it. So he showed up just to film Craig's Pride Fest, but he was fascinated by me, fascinated by me being a trans woman who's uh, happily married, has a supportive wife, and uh, kids, and is a storyteller, and he loved my stories, and he loved how I worked the crowd, and so he asked me if he could contact me about filming more footage of me, and I said, sure. He contacted me a few days ago. He absolutely wants to make me the focus of the documentary, and now we're working out when he will be following me in my house for days, to make me the focus of the movie. Cool. I talked with my entire family to see if they were okay. Maxwell said that he's fine with being in the documentary as long as someone helps him clean his room. Okay. Which makes sense because it's messy AF. Uh, Eleanor's fine as long as they don't interview her and don't go in her room. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to have a documentary film crew following me around, which is exciting. Um, and then this Saturday, this coming Saturday, I'll be doing another Pride performance. This one will be here in my town, in my small town. And my church will be there. Emmanuel Episcopal Church will have a table there. Because uh, Episcopals are like Christians, but good Christians and not the crappy ones that, that are all over the place and forcing all okay, of their laws well, upon But now, is that all Episcopals, or is that just your church? All Episcopals. There might be some uh, old-timey ones out there that, you know, still are very traditional, but the, the main belief of Episcopalianism is... Jesus said to love your neighbor as yourself, and that means um, divorced people, sex workers, trans people, drag queens. It, it doesn't matter how you feel about someone, because God wants you to treat everyone equally, even people you don't agree with. So uh, Episcopalianism is the way that Christianity should be, but isn't because most fundamental Christians are a-holes. Yes. So, like, today, I went to brunch at my Episcopal church, and one of the priests came, and we had a planning meeting about pride. And I told him how the Prague pride was, and he said, well, there was a pride event. We didn't even talk about Barbie once. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, there was a pride event at a smaller town nearby uh, Seminole last year, and they were at that one. So this isn't even my church's first pride event, so that's good, and I'm happy about that. I've also uh, been applying for a bunch of odd jobs. I might get a job as a carousel operator, as a storyteller. I have an audition to be a scare actor on the 10th. Um... The Norman Brewery finally got a hold of me, and this week we'll be having a Zoom meeting to uh, finalize our contract, where I will be doing regular story times with them. Nice! I'm happy about that. And, uh, yes! So now we've gotten all of my shit done. Tell me about the Barbie movie! Was that? Gay Ken was in it! Gay That's Ken the best was part. in it. Gay Ken was in it. I I went, I I marked out when Gay Ken showed up. What were your thoughts, Bunny? Uh, I liked it. I liked it. I I having watched the Barbie movie now makes people like Ben Shapiro and all that even fucking stupider. You know, just even... I, I hear all of these you people talking about... Are you fucking kidding about... me? You're oh. fragile, 
delicate, pussy ass man, mm -hmm. whatever it is, can't handle the Barbie movie? And I've seen people saying, oh, low testosterone can. Bitch, he is a girl's toy. Yeah. With no penis. Yeah. And you are upset that, what, he's not listening to Joe Rogan and going, eh? Like, yeah. fuck you. I, that, that's exactly it. Like, they're literally all upset that the Barbie movie isn't butch enough for them. Yeah. Like, what, what's wrong with you? What is really, really wrong with you? It was it was fun. It it, it was no Barb and Star, which is uh -huh. still my my litmus test for anything like this. Mm -hmm. But it comes close. There would certainly there's certainly a Barb and Star Barbie double feature somewhere in my future. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. I love the, the movie. Best especially... movie I've ever seen? No. Was it was it a decent comedy? Yeah. If you had told me five years ago, hell, if you had told me last year that in 2023, two of my favorite acting roles would be from America Ferreira and Rhea fucking Perlman, I would have slapped <laughs> you across the face. Let's face facts. Rhea Perlman would have been better if it was Stan Lee. I'm sorry. That's all I'm saying. I love Rhea Perlman, nothing against her. But Ban Stan Lee would have been better for that part. Even your, then. Your Barbie troop believer, Excelsior! Yes. I love... My favorite Stan Lee cameo is still Teen Titans go to the movies. Yeah. Absolute best. This is a DC movie? I need to get out of here. Oh, the best. Absolute best. Love that. But it's a cute movie. I I, I cried when America Ferreira did her big speech about being a woman because in my mind, that was my mom giving me the talk that I never got because I was a guy. Yeah. And it meant a lot to me. And also, uh, one of the main Barbies is trans. Which is one of the reasons why people are freaking the F out about this movie. But the what? fact that, like... Um... Was she the doctor, Barbie? Um, I believe her name is Hari Neff. She's got red hair. And, um... Um, I'd hate to do this because I am a trans woman, but she's the Barbie with the Adam's apple. Okay. There's like that whole group of Barbies, and one is a president, and one is uh, whatever. I believe she's Dr. Barbie. But, yeah, she's, she's one of the main Barbies. Yes. A trans woman is one of the main Barbies. And so, ah, oh, I dressed up all nice to go see it and everything, and I was going to go see it again tomorrow, but I I have to go see The Haunted Mansion. It has had the worst reviews, but I'm, really? I'm going in. I'm going in with an open mind to see The Haunted Mansion tomorrow and we'll see what I think about it. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. I've heard some know. horrible things. Horrible things. I never would have thought that that we'd come to a a, a part of America where Rhea Perlman's movie has better box office yeah. than Danny DeVito's movie. I, I, I was really, really kind of surprised, though, when when Ken, Ken came back to Barbie Land to start setting up the his patriarchy, you know, that just like it seemed out of nowhere... He cut Barbie's arms and legs off and put her in a box. In a box. Yeah. The thing that the thing that gets me that about the Barbie movie. The thing that gets me when I saw the Barbie movie, the first thing that ran through my mind is 
Okay, I get that the beginning is a parody. Yeah. Of a space oddity. I don't think everyone in this theater gets that the beginning is a parody. Really? I don't know. I just don't think that, like, some of the, like, 45-year-old soccer moms in there know too much about the monolith, you, you know? Yeah. And the giant space baby. So I was a bit worried about that. Like, okay, I, I'm a film geek. I get the beginning. I don't know if everyone in this theater gets the beginning. And also, yeah, there's some freaking kids 2001. here. That's 2001. You don't have to be a film geek for that. But still, I didn't think that everybody got it. Yes, Max? I've got a container of Gleebles. You got a... That's what I'm calling them. I'm calling them Gleebles. Um, Maxwell is just uh, over here playing with his balls. Don't worry about it. Uh, okay. I'm playing with... Uh, I got a container of Gleebles. Gleebles? Gleebles. That's what I'm Gleebles. calling them. Mm. They're new creatures. All right, then. Hey, um, Maxwell. I thank you for being here during the podcast, and I love you. I love you so much that later I will be cutting off your arms and your legs and keeping you in a box. Oh. It's yes. going to be called Boxing Maxwell. Yes. You know what? We're going to shorten that. Boxwell. Boxwell. You're just going to be a stump in a box. It's my Max in a box! <laughs> All right, you got Gleeble? You got Gleeble? Gleeble's? Okay. Purple Gleebles? Some people watch this on Twitch and YouTube, but this is... Pink Gleebles? Most of our viewers listen to the podcast, and they have no idea what you are showing the camera. So for those of you who are listening to this later on Twitch or Stitch or whatever... And then you got Yellow Gleebles. They're you small little the yellow, squishy balls. The Yellow Gleebles are the rarest ones. Ah, uh, I got you there. He's trying to show my Gleeble ball. So that is Jeff, our monologue. Um, my life is kind of crazy right now. Uh, less than a minute. So, that is it for our monologue. We are going to be taking a break. There's going to be some music, some videos, a bunch of fun stuff. And then when we come back, we are going to be talking about this week's movie. Boxing Helena and... Um, at least one mention of the band The Misfits. Yes. At least one. Um, and and um, I'm going to be screaming about Michael Jackson and Art Garfunkel. Yes. And David Lynch. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun, so just stay tuned with us. It's halftime. We're going to be playing some fun stuff. And when we come back, Boxing Helena! We're going to be punching the crap out of her. Yes. I yes, keep we will. spinning out popcorn. I'm eating popcorn during the podcast because I'm a professional. So we will be right back.